Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We come again to Palm Sunday, yet a Palm Sunday unlike any before that we have known in our lifetimes. We cannot gather on the green, we cannot process with our palm crosses, we cannot read our usual dramatic gospel. But at least we're here, because this time last year our churches were closed on Palm Sunday. And I've had so many messages from people, both from within our church congregations, but also much wider in the community, for whom knowing the churches are open has been a great sign of hope. Many people spread their cloaks on the road. Palm Sunday is a day of crowds, and crowds, as we know, can be fickle. Crowds can change unpredictably. Crowds can be peaceful and quiet one moment, and then a raging mob the next. A crowd can be a crowd of shared celebration and joy. For example, the joyous greeting of a successful team coming back with a sports trophy. Or a crowd can be an angry force of violence, as we've seen in Bristol very recently. Jesus knew crowds. He spent time with many people. And he clearly knew how to, as they say, work a crowd. He could read the mood. He had a great sense of what was going on. He understood people. He spoke with humour, with irony, and with appeal. He could stun a crowd into silence one moment, and the next he could provoke hostility and resentment because what he said really hit home. And he knew how to do that. Margaret Thatcher was often mis, uh, infamously misquoted, saying, there is no such thing as society. Well, it's true she said that, but it wasn't all of what she said. And the next bit is actually what matters. Uh, it, we ignore the fact that she qualified that by saying, there is no such thing as society. Society only exists because it is a collection of every single individual come together. A crowd is a crowd, many people, but it is made up of single, unique and individual people and every single person matters. You get a clue of that in St. Luke, because in St. Luke's Gospel, Palm Sunday is immediately preceded by the story of Zacchaeus. Now, that's a great story, and children love it in school assemblies. But you'll recall that Zacchaeus was a small man, so he had to climb a tree in order to see Jesus. And you may remember that Zacchaeus was a bad man who had cheated people for many years in their taxes. And if you remember Zacchaeus was a bad man, then you remember wrong. Like crowds, we jump to conclusions, and collective memory isn't always right. Nowhere in the story of Zacchaeus does it actually say that he was a cheat or dishonest. When he meets Jesus, he says, If I have defrauded anyone, I will pay them back four times over. If I have defrauded anyone. And the if makes a huge difference. Jesus, in a crowd, had that skill to spot the one person who needed God's touch and love and attention most. He could spot the individual with a crowd. He could spot Zacchaeus hiding up his tree. He could spot, spot the blind man who was pushed to the back of the crowd. He very often could focus in on the ignored, the overlooked, the despised. Jesus spotted Zacchaeus and many others. Now, I spoke last week on that text, the request of the Greeks, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And I suggested that most of the time, most of the people see the Jesus they want to see. They see the Jesus that fits their agenda, the Jesus who matches their views, the Jesus that doesn't ask awkward questions, the Jesus that doesn't make us change how we live. And the crowd 
on Palm Sunday was no different. They wanted a new king. They wanted somebody to make life better. They wanted a hope they could get behind and applaud and feel they were going somewhere because life had been dreadful for far too long. They wanted what you and I want, for our lives to be better than they are right now. Jesus knew what they saw in him. Jesus understood what they expected of him. Jesus understood what they were hoping for, and he knew he wasn't going to give it to them. So he chose to ride into Jerusalem on a donkey, which is a parody of a Roman triumphal procession. I am not who you think I am. I am not what you are expecting. It was a dramatic enactment that says, you've got it wrong. What you're hoping for is not what I've come to bring. And that's why the crowd in a few days turned angry from adulation into baying for his crucifixion. Now, to be fair to the crowd, even Jesus's closest friends didn't get him right. Judas, for example, I don't believe ever set out to betray Jesus. He very likely believed that Jesus was indeed God's chosen and sent Messiah, come to set his people free from Roman occupation and tyranny. His actions were not designed to send Jesus to his death. Judas just, Judas just didn't understand why Jesus arrived in Jerusalem, but then did not act. And I believe what Judas did was only designed to provoke Jesus into acting and to bring about a new age and a new revolution and the end of Roman rule. And hence Judas's complete and utter dismay when he realized just how badly he had made a mistake and just how badly it had gone wrong. Like many, Judas saw the Jesus he wanted to see. He did not see the man riding on a donkey he did not see the man who knelt to wash his, ha his friend's feet. He did not see the man who would accept the cross as the only means of doing God's will. So this year, we come to an unusual Palm Sunday. It will be an unusual Holy Week, and it will be an unusual Easter. Maybe this time, we might catch a glimpse of an unusual Jesus. Not the Jesus we think we know. Not the Jesus we expect. Not the Jesus we hope for. Not the man we think we're safe with. This is a hard and a difficult time. But in hard and difficult times, God makes new beginnings. And maybe in this unusual Holy Week, we will catch a glimpse of God and of Christ as we have never seen before. And let us pray. <clears throat> Holy Father, as Christ entered Jerusalem, let him enter our lives. Let the King of glory come in that he may rule in our hearts and that we may offer our love and our lives to him. Through the same Christ our Lord who offered his life for us and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. <clears throat>